You're watching this video because you love sports cars. I'm making this video because I love sports cars. But do you know who doesn't love sports cars? The car manufacturers that make them. I'll explain that in a moment, but first, have you subscribed to the Car Guru's YouTube channel yet? We post new and used car reviews, helping you work out which car is right for you. Go on, tap that subscribe button. The thing about purpose-built, ground-up sports cars is that they're fiendishly difficult to justify from a commercial point of view. They cost a lot to develop, they sell in relatively small numbers compared to hatchbacks and SUVs, and profit margins are skinny, so what we're seeing more and more of these days is car manufacturers putting aside their differences and sharing platforms, powertrains, and even factories. Both of these cars are the results of collaborations between two manufacturers with no previous connection. The MX-5 shares its underpinnings with the Fiat and the Abarth 124 Spider, while the Supra, well, that shares its platform and its entire powertrain with the BMW Z4. Why? Well, because if you split the cost of development between two car manufacturers, the business case for a sports car finally makes sense. Toyota has previously teamed up with Subaru on the GT86 and BRZ project. And remember, the Alpine A110 was originally going to be a joint enterprise between Alpine and Caterham until the British company pulled out. Increasingly then, the new sports car market is being propped up by component sharing, by splitting the cost of development with another car maker. Now the Supra and the MX-5 are clearly not rivals, not least because this one is pretty much twice as expensive as this one. So this isn't a comparison video. Instead, I'm gonna review them individually and then ask if this new trend for collaboration is something to celebrate or something to be wary of. First up, the Mazda. Would you believe the Mazda MX-5 has been in production for more than 30 years? In 2019, Mazda launched this 30th anniversary edition. Based on the 2-litre Sport, it comes exclusively in racing orange paint and features forged raised wheels, Brembo brakes and subtle 30th anniversary badging. Like the 2-litre Sport, it gets Bilstein dampers, a limited slip differential and a normally aspirated 4-cylinder rated at 182 brake horsepower. The 30th anniversary edition cost £28,095. Now that bright orange colour scheme continues within the cabin. You've got orange door tops here, accents on the air vents, and then plenty of orange stitching as well. I'd call it eye-catching. Now this fourth generation MX-5 overall is 105 millimetres shorter than the previous model. And within the cabin, it does feel like a very compact car. If you're much taller than six foot tall with the roof on, you're gonna struggle for headroom. If you're really tall, this seat just won't push back far enough for you. However, if you can get comfortable, I really don't think there's much to complain about with this cabin. You can find some scratchy plastics here and there, but it's got a lovely sweep of Alcantara across the dash. The seating position is lovely. This is a proper sports car driving environment. The long-awaited fifth-generation Supra arrived in 2019 and caused a bit of a stir. Some said it was so clearly a BMW beneath its very distinctive bodywork that it didn't deserve the Supra nameplate at all. The basic platform, with its short wheelbase and wide tracks, is shared with BMW Z4. Meanwhile, the 335 brake horsepower turbocharged six-cylinder engine and eight-speed automatic gearbox are lifted directly from BMW. The Supra starts at £52,695. That BMW connection is more evident within the cabin than anywhere else. This gear lever, the infotainment system, all the switch gear here, that's all lifted directly from BMW with no real effort to disguise it. However, if you're going to borrow switch gear from anyone, it might as well be BMW. It's all very high quality. The fit and finish here is lovely. And for a two-seater sports car, the cabin does feel lovely and spacious as well. The Supra is not a big car, but when you first start driving it, it does feel pretty sizable, mostly because the bonnet is so long and you can't actually see where it ends. Meanwhile, these seats are very comfortable. The ride quality is actually very smooth and plush. The powertrain is very refined. It all makes this Supra feel more like a GT car, a Grand Tourer, 
than an out-and-out -out sports car. The heart of the Supra is its 3-litre straight six. Toyota could never have brought back the Supra nameplate without it. And it wouldn't have been remotely viable to develop a six-cylinder engine from scratch just for this Supra. So without that BMW connection, there is no new Supra. And yes, it's a borrowed engine, but it's also a fantastic engine. It's got bundles of power and torque. I'm convinced it's got far more power and torque than the official figures suggest it has. It revs out with real crisp, clean energy, and it also sounds fantastic. Keen drivers will lament the lack of a proper manual gearbox, but the eight-speed automatic is good. It's smooth in auto mode and pretty responsive in manual. Dynamically, the Supra is well executed. It's got a really good ride, as I've said. It deals with bumps in the road surface beautifully. It's a good neutral chassis balance. There's loads of grip, loads of traction. The steering is accurate, but it's in no way talkative. So there's plenty to commend about the car and the way it drives. I just wish it was more distinctive. I wish it had more of an edge. It was slightly more uncompromising. As it is, it feels very BMW-like. This feels like it's just the start for the new Supra. I sense there's a more characterful and more single-minded sports car lurking within. I just hope Toyota one day chooses to liberate it. Now then, the Mazda MX-5, a tiny car with a small cabin, but as long as you can live with those two things, it's a perfectly usable car day to day. Visibility is really good. It's an easy car to drive. I feel comfortable sat here in these Recaro seats. And the ride quality, well, it's a sports car, isn't it? So it doesn't have a super smooth ride but it is very well composed. It never beats you up. That's the key thing. So this MX-5, a very usable little car. Maybe the best thing about this MX-5 is its engine, not least because you just don't get normally aspirated four cylinders in modern performance cars. It loves to rev. It'll spin up to 7,500 RPM. It sounds great. It's got just the right amount of power for the torque. When Mazda facelifted this MX-5 in 2018, it made some major revisions to the two liter engine. Before that, it was quite an underwhelming performance car engine. But now, well, now I think it's the sweetest engine in any real world affordable performance car. The manual gearbox is a joy to use as well with a tight, direct throw. It's just a shame the very light clutch pedal isn't better matched to the weight of the gear shift. I've always found the very roly poly handling of these MX-5s a bit frustrating. You turn into a corner, and the whole car seems to list. It can be frustrating, but I can also overlook it, see through it, and see what a lovely, lively, agile roadster this is. It's so fun to drive. It's perfectly balanced. It doesn't have too much grit. It feels light as a feather. The steering is pin sharp. It's a really faithful, really enjoyable, engaging driver's car. The Mazda and Toyota are both the result of joint enterprises with other car companies, but in the case of the MX-5, you'd never know. It's far too easy to tell with the Supra. The Mazda is everything it needs to be. It's a fun, lively, sporty roadster, and it shows how effective platform sharing can be. The Supra, meanwhile, well, it's a very good sports car, but I'm just waiting for a little bit more from it, for a Supra with a more distinct personality, more of a sports car edge. But hey, without the BMW tie-in, this new Supra wouldn't exist at all, and I'm just glad it does. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to comment below and let us know what you think of these two cars, and subscribe as well to the Car Gurus YouTube channel. Remember also to head to cargurus.co.uk where you'll find a great deal on your next used car from a top-rated dealer.